Hello there folks and welcome back to the Chaps Guide. My name is Ash and I am your host on this journey through men's style, self-development and personal grooming. And today I'm here to talk to you about something which I think is the overlooked hero of men's style, the humble pocket square. It can be oh, oh so humble, yet it can also make all the difference to your clothing. And I think in recent years, even people who would consider themselves to be well-dressed have overlooked this simple yet incredibly elegant accessory to their clothing. To the extent that, you know, I know so many men who go out and buy rather expensive suits and they never even undo the stitching which seals the breast pocket closed. Because, you know, most suits come with the pocket stitched up for transit purposes. They never even undo that stitching which seals up the breast pocket and they are missing out on such an incredible opportunity to project a big element of their personal taste and their, their style across to the people that they meet as they go through life. So today we're going to talk about the good old pocket square, why I think it is an, you know, an unmissable opportunity to dress your suit or your jacket or your blazer to make it so much better than it is just in the plane, just naked. And uh, we'll talk about some other aspects of the pocket square along the way. Now, of course, if you go back a generation to the golden era of men's style, you know, the 30s, 40s, 50s, even into the 60s, no self-respecting gentleman, no movie star or public figure would leave the house without an appropriate pocket square for the situation that they were going into. Playful, if it was casual, formal, something simple as I'm wearing today, the straight fold, if it was a more formal event. Uh, but the pocket square can trace its history much, much further back than that. Now we know that uh, clothing historians can chart the pocket square's journey way back to the period of the Renaissance, when many well-dressed gentlemen of that period would carry a handkerchief as a matter of course. Now, of course, back then, the handkerchief um, was not just because nobody wants to wipe their nose in their sleeve, but the handkerchief would have been soaked in cologne because people of that era, which let's not forget was a very unsanitary period, you know, they would have been, life would have been full of the miasma of the stench of life as people empty their effluent into the street or gentlemen took snuff they snorted snuff up their nostrils raw tobacco and this would have necessitated you know regular blowing and wiping of the nose so you needed to carry a handkerchief and you needed somewhere to store your handkerchief and any significant pocket on a gentleman's outfit would have been a place where you could poke the handkerchief just somewhere to store it initially now, as time went on and actually the use of snuff became more popular, people needed a handkerchief to hand to wipe their nose. Or even if you were a cowboy on the range in, in North America, you may need a, a, a handkerchief to mop your brow from the sweat which would have been caused by working in the direct sunlight. And as time went on, handkerchiefs gained more and more of a foothold. In the 1920s, when the Prince of Wales at the time started carrying a handkerchief as a demonstration of his personal style, displayed in different materials, different patterns, and poked into the, the breast pocket of his lounge suit, the handkerchief found its home because up to that point, you know, the breast pocket seems to be a superfluous addition to a gentleman's suit. However, when the Prince of Wales stuffed his handkerchief into that pocket, thus uh, a whole protocol of sartorial style was created. And we can all thank the Prince of Wales from the 1920s uh, who set about showing us that a pocket square can be a fantastic addition, a wonderful, colourful, textured and patterned accessory to a gentleman's outfit. Now, how do you wear your pocket square? What are the rules? Well, there is one rule around pocket squares, and that is there are no rules. Pocket squares, to my mind, are 
the little bit of chaos which a gentleman is allowed to introduce into the very structured protocols of his suit. If you think about it, most suits, I'm wearing a very standard business suit today in grey, it's quite benign, it's quite boring, it is expressionless. I'm deliberately wearing a block coloured navy woven tie, so this is about as plain as it can get. But when you add a pocket square, you add interest to your clothing. So hence, never leave the house without a pocket square. And that rule about that little bit of chaos, well, if you are going to a formal occasion and you don't want to be flamboyant, you don't want to stand out from the crowd, there is nothing more simple than a straight fold handkerchief in white linen, which is perfect, or cotton as this particular one is, it's the perfect addition to everything. Because if you think about it, a white straight fold pocket square like this fits with everything that you could possibly wear. From the darker suits to the lighter suits, the white is a neutral colour and it will blend with whatever else you're wearing. If you're wearing a particularly buoyant tie, shall we say, uh, which is you know, a raft of different colours, and you don't want it to argue with your pocket square, simply go for the white pocket square. If you want a gentleman who really knows how to rock the plain fold pocket square, the former Duke of Edinburgh, Prince Philip. Every image that you ever see of Prince Philip, he wears a straight fold pocket square with his suit. He absolutely rocked that look, and it looked restrained, but perfect just the way that you want to carry it off. So if you can think of no other, get yourself your white handkerchief out of the sock drawer where Auntie Mabel gave you that pack of them for Christmas and you've never known what to do with them. Stick it in your pocket and you're ready to go. Just remember one thing, you never blow your nose on the pocket square which is in your pocket, right? The old adage is one for showing, one in the pocket for blowing. So always remember that. Now there is one sort of rule which goes with the pocket square and that is you should never have your pocket square made of the same material as your tie. It looks as if you're trying too hard and it looks rather gauche but the reality is there is no rule. So if it's something that you really passionately want to do, you want to be coordinated to that level, I would say go for it. But generally speaking, most sartorially connected gentlemen will frown upon the matching pocket square and tie. But you know, you're the boss of your clothes, you wear what you want. Now for me, as I say, right, I'm wearing about as boring as an outfit as you can get. A white shirt, a grey suit with a block coloured tie. It needs a pocket square to jazz it up. Now the secret is to have a bit of a selection. Now over the many years I have collected a number of pocket squares and you know every so often I'll buy one, I'll see one somewhere and I will add them to my little shoebox full of pocket squares as you can see here. In the last few years the place I've gone to is Soho Scarves. London-based company, they provide all of the pocket squares, cravats and scarves which I've been buying uh, and wearing over the last few years. I should say they haven't paid me to say that but I am um, one of their you know, best customers. I absolutely love the work they're doing. They make very reasonably priced silk, polyester and even woolen pocket squares which I think really add a great deal to one's outfit. Um, I will leave a link to their to their website below and also leave a discount uh, code which you can use to knock a bit of money off your pocket square shopping. Now let's look at the way that a pocket square can add interest to your clothing. Um, let's do away with this white cotton handkerchief, okay, it's a good you know catch-all situation. Let's, I mean I'm wearing a very navy blue tie here, I want to wear something which complements the other items on my clothing. Now generally speaking, when you're wearing grey, when you're wearing white, you can put any colour with it and it's going to be equally at home. Um, I particularly like blues and I like strong colours like reds as well because they bring a visual pop when you see them in the pocket square. So in this particular case, I'm just going to carry out my favourite and ordinary everyday pocket square fold, if you can call it a fold. I wouldn't even describe it as a fold, I just shove it in the pocket and I titillate it until I am satisfied there is just a little bit, enough poking out which shows visual interest. 
And there we go. It's called the Puff. Generally speaking, that type of fold, there are many other folds out there. Please, please, you know, if you really want to get deep into the pocket square world, um, at the very least, understand how to do the puff, um, understand how to do the straight fold, and you're well on your way. You know, there's little more to it than that. But the puff is perfect. Now, lots of people will say that I don't wear a pocket square because as I wear it throughout the day, the pocket square will ride down into the pocket like that, and then it's an annoyance. Every time I look down, it's disappeared, and I have to keep poking around and pulling it up. Well, I get you. I understand where you're coming from. Uh, let's pick another one. So let's get a nice, strong colored one, shall we? Let us pick, oh, here we go. What about this beautiful one by Soho Scarves? Here we go. Right, so nice pocket square. Silk. Silk, by its very nature, is prone to slip down in the pocket. But there is a route you can go around to overcome that. And that is by using a pocket square frame. There are many different types. You can even make them at home from the cardboard from a cereal box, all right? You know, there's no reason to spend money, but you can. And these simple plastic ones, I think they're like four for $10 off Amazon, and they are very practical. And all you do, you get your pocket square and you fold it through the little ladder, if you want to call it that, in the frame. Really, really straightforward process. That way, it holds your pocket square. Hang on, let's get it just right. It holds your pocket square in place all day long. So, as you go through life, your pocket square is now not going to slip down in the pocket because it's been held in place by that simple, extremely light, totally invisible pocket square frame. And there you go, that pocket square is on there. It's not gonna move all day, all night, whatever I do. And it's the perfect solution if you find your pocket square sliding down, causing you annoyance. So there we go. What more is there to say about the pocket square other than it is a spectacular opportunity for you to articulate your finest elements of style and panache to the world that you encounter. I tell you what, I've been wearing a pocket square for well over a decade. It is the perfect dressing to the ordinary and boring business suit in the modern era. And I don't think there is any other item that I've ever worn that has caused so many people to come up to me and say, wow, I love your pocket square. And it's well worth curating a little collection. I mean, I've accumulated these pocket squares over the last 10 years. You know, I buy a couple a year. And before you know it, you start to get a nice collection so that you, you get this wonderful feeling in the morning when you've got dressed and you think, okay, what is my personality feeling like today? Do I want to go subdued? Do I want to go sort of calm and staid and conservative, like this uh, paisley pocket square in a wonderful silk? Or do I want to be flamboyant and you know strong of personality by something with an asymmetric pattern, pattern like this? And uh, you know, there's all different, oh, here we go. Here's one of my favorites, actually. This really does bring a pop of color and it brings to life any garment that you're wearing. Uh, don't forget, pocket squares need not cost you anything. One of the things I often do is, you know, when I've worn out a shirt, for instance, and I'm ready to throw it away, uh, it might be a patterned shirt, it might have a bit of colour to it, I always take a, um, a dressmaker's pinking shears, I cut out a pocket square shape from the centre of the back of the shirt, and hence I've just created a free pocket square. So, you know, you, it's a kind of recycling. If you've worn the shirt out, even if it's a pajama jacket, if it's got a wonderful paisley pattern on it, why throw it away? Cut a little square out, and then you'll have a little reminder of your favorite shirt and a free pocket square to boot. So there we go. Do not miss the opportunity to dress your outfit in the best possible way with some color, some pattern, and some texture. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this discussion about the not-so-humble pocket square. I think you'll now agree it can be a big player in your everyday style, and it can improve the way that you look to the wider world at virtually no cost. And let's not forget, you're never going to grow out of the pocket square. You're never going to find that it doesn't fit you anymore. It's going to be with you for life, and it's never going to go out of style. So, if you've enjoyed the video, click the thumbs up, Hit the red button and join us as a subscriber. 
And until the next time, take care of yourselves. Wear your pocket squares with style and panache. And I will see you again very soon.